Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, okay, so uh, what we wanted to do for our graduates was to be able to honor them during this coronavirus uh, pandemic, um, where we couldn't have a real uh, celebration. So we decided to do a photo montage. Uh, so the upload link feature in Canto is what allowed us to do this. And once we got the kind of the idea uh, of this feature through our rep, uh, Alicia, by the way, she's awesome. She really kind of showed me, okay, here's what you can do. And so what we, this, these took stages to do. And so how we started was we created the upload link, obviously in Canto, and that's in your settings, uh, again, where that profile is. And we sent an email to the graduating class. Now this, this was sent directly to them, not to the whole university. Um, and essentially what, what we did was we, we kind of explained the project, what we wanted from them, and then uh, uh, provided the upload link so that they could actually upload their photos. Oop. And so the, the other thing that we had to deal with was organizing the photos. Uh, once with the first email we sent out, we got maybe 80 plus photos. And so there, there was a, a method to, to that madness that I'll get to a little bit later. From there, uh, we created a photo montage using a template. And from there, the chancellor would send an email to these graduates uh, just saying congratu congratulations. And then in there was an embedded file with the video that they could watch. So let me talk about the upload link. Uh, so if you go into your settings, area you would find uh, kind of like what the, the previous speaker was talking about with portals we have links and connections uh, on the top tab and so we created the link and um, so when we sent it uh, we, we some of the things that we discussed to these students were that they can be creative but it really should be for the whole family and that was our our way of saying don't do anything to risk K, <laughs> which they will. Um, we also asked them to send just one photo. Um, we did have a few people send in um, multiple of the same person. And so we had to kind of remind them we just need one photo. Um, and to use the highest quality on their device, for which for the most part, it's gonna be their cell phones or possibly uh, iPad but um, I'll get into this part of it later and something that we learned. And uh, we also told them to limit the amount of people in the photo. Uh, this is something again that we learned we should have put in the first email uh, because we were getting crowd shots um, or group shots and it didn't really work that way. So we sent them a second email <laughs> and explained that if we really want to see people's faces, it's, it's best to keep it under three people. And so the top right, if you look, is um, it was a group of like six, maybe eight um, ladies. And they got cut out because we had to frame it to, to the dimensions. Uh, and then, of course, the group shot, you can't see anybody's face. So we showed them what not to do and what you should do. So some tips that uh, kind of suggestions and maybe things that we learned. Uh, the email really should be sent from someone specific, not just randomly and definitely not communications. Uh, it, in our case, we, we asked uh, the head of our enrollment. Um, she actually has an email list for just the graduating class. Be firm with your dates. Um, we were still getting photos well after the due date. Um, so you, it, it just needs to be kind of reiterated time and time again, just this is the deadline. Um, this is what um, I was referring to before with the highest quality of the camera. I should have had the foresight 
to include my name and email for tech questions. Uh, essentially, they were asking tech questions, but it, they had, and, and I would be able to answer them, but it had to go through several channels. So by providing a tech person in the first email, I think that's going to resolve a lot of issues. <clears throat> A reminder email, uh, one maybe two weeks later is actually, uh, it, it helped us tremendously. Uh, we found that the first group had too many technical questions or they didn't think it was a real project. And so the follow-up email is what we really got a huge amount of, uh, we, we got probably twice as many photos. So organizing the photos, I had mentioned this earlier, it, it does get out of hand if you don't have a system. Fortunately, this was, we did have a system before we sent the email. And this is where Canto's uh, tagging features really help. Um, so we created a few uh, folders uh, within our Canto library. And because there were, this was a, a, a several people working on this project we had a, a system where it was every two days or every day twice a day i would transfer the new photos to this folder the photographer would look at them and then revise whatever and then he would put them in a third folder that uh, was to be used in the in the photo or in the montage so to keep track of all of that that's where these tags come in handy so I was, I would know for sure, okay, we didn't use this photo because it's, it's not, it hasn't been moved over to the completed folder. So I can answer more details about that if you, if you don't really understand, but it, it, it tag everything is essentially what I'm saying. I'll show you a quick sample. Um, this is where all those photos uh, came to play and why you can tell why it was so important to have close-ups. Um, the ones that have group, they're not very great. So that kind of gives you an idea of what uh, we did. Um, it was a great way to honor the students. They were very happy with it. And um, that's it. Thank you. Ha, that was way too fast, man. We expected you to go over five more minutes. <laughs> Great job. Quick virtual round of applause for Javier. Um, it, it looks like, Javier, you're, sh you're sharing your background, Zelda, which I'm sure is a, a wonderful game. Um, <laughs> that's great. We actually had a couple questions come in, and we have some time for it if, if you're game to field a couple questions. Absolutely. Please the do. The first one was, was actually a really good question from, from Luis. Uh, at LSSC. I'm not sure what that stands for, but I'm sure it's an awesome place. Uh, his question was, is there a way to not allow users to see photos that have been uploaded in an upload link? Um, so when somebody uploads photos, uh, I don't think they actually can see the other elements that are already in there. Uh, in fact, we, we ran into a few times when uh, some students thought theirs didn't get uploaded because they couldn't see it. And so I ha I, that's because I had already moved it to another hard drive uh, or to our actual Canto drive um, because when they upload it, it's kind of like in this temporary place. And so it's, it's my job to transfer it over to our Canto library. So, I had to explain that that's what I had. I had already moved it, but we did get it. Um, and I think that's a long way of answering your question. <laughs> uh, and yeah, and it's, it's a super easy way to actually disable the ability for users to see what everyone else has uploaded. Um, but it is a question we see quite a bit. And by the way, Luis is from Lake Sumter State College, which I should have known because my dad is moving to Florida and it's in the great state of Florida. Um, two more questions that are kind of related, so we'll field them at the same time. Uh, Jessica and Paul asked, uh, one, how long did it take you to collect all those photos? And related to that, did you ask students to sign photo release forms as well? The release form is actually already built into uh, when they uh, start their time at, uh, at the university. So it's kind of like so our photographer, Les Duggins, he can take pictures of anybody on campus because 
if they're going here, they've already signed that release form. Um, in fact, you, anybody who doesn't want to be in a photo or, or be captured in any way has to actually fill out a different form. Um, mm. And we would know about that. Uh, currently, we don't have anybody who's opted for that. Uh, the other question was... Um, How long did it take you to collect all the oh, photos? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I would have given us... I would have preferred to have given us at least one more week um, because we do have uh, stragglers. And that's normal. I mean, these people are doing their their final projects and all that. So, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, but we did it in about three weeks, I think. It was really rushed. Um, and it, so it helped to have three different people working on this project. Um, a week where we sent the email, got some photos. Second week, we sent out follow-up. We got a lot of photos. And so we had about a week to get it done. Uh, we wanted to meet the deadline of, of when their actual graduation would have happened, the commencement would have happened, which was early May. So we started in April and we hit that deadline. Okay. Three weeks. I would give it more. And again, just for anyone that's curious, Javier offered to answer any questions people have. So I'm going to be sending a follow-up email that has both uh, all of the speaker's contact info, but also their presentation so that you have access to it. Um, quick fun fact about Les, which is the photographer that Javier works with. He actually was a photographer for the Carolina Panthers in a past life. So they just have a ton of talent aggregating at USC Upstate, which is pretty cool. Uh, thanks again, Javier. That was awesome.